الآن موعدنا مع كيارا تونيلي من جامعة روماتري وتمثل الفريق الفائز بالمسابقة العالمية لعام 2014 Welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed your lunch. Now, um, I would like to invite Chiara Tunelli from Roma Tree University, Solar Decathlon Europe winning team 2014. Please welcome. Hello. So, few people. The few one, I hope they are not sleeping after lunch because that's could be a possibility. So welcome in this big global family of solar decathlon as Edwin Rodriguez told us. And I can say that I belong to this family and that's true. It's a big family and it's a very joyful family. I underline my intervention today like defining solar decathlon as a way to experiment today for better build tomorrow. And this is very important because really uh, rely us to the future and to what's going on in the world against the global climate change. And um, I s used to start with this, this slide who show, uh, that shows um, the energy uses and uses in Europe. And this is very important because Europe, you know, it's the real most advanced country on energy efficiency and, and renewable energy in the world a country. Anyway, continent is not a country. I, and, <laughs> It's going less by less, becoming many countries and no more a continent united, but anyway. And uh, as you can see, the purple is the households. And they affect the end uses of energy uh, at the same level of industry and transport. So that means that in our houses, we consume in Europe the same of the entire in European industry and entire European mobility. That's so important and that's so incredible that in 1999, Richard King and the DOA already knew that problem, addressing the competition towards the housing and not to other domains. Because it's housing that affects the behavior of all of us and that's the real important thing uh, about this competition. And uh, if we compare this, this end uses of energy with the production of energy, we can see that renewable in Europe are still very few, 11% on the total produ production of, of energy. And so and, uh, in, in, the other, in the other graphs, you can see the renewable energy. And most, more than 50% of that energy is produced by biomass. So again, uh, a renewable energy that produces CO2. So at the end, not so clean as I can say wind or solar uh, power. And so for that, I think that solar decathlon is a very important, as I told you, competition. And I will talk, uh, this is the, the map of the world. And you can see here all the uh, towns that have been until now involved in hosting a solar decathlon and in taking part to a solar decathlon. And you can see that more step by step in the years, as Richard told us, all the world have been uh, involved in that. And uh, that's represent, uh, demonstrates that uh, the address is the right one, if globally it's accepted. And uh, the, the step forward of that Dubai is doing in that, it's very, very important. It's very important also dealing with all uh, uh, the issues of the COP21, the meeting in, in Paris a few months ago. Uh, it's, it's important because uh, if we want really to address a change from your country can arrive the right answer, I think, because it's, it's where the consumer are the most important because you, you, uh, although you don't have your own oil, you, you, you belong to a world who, who produces a lot of oil. So you don't have this problem. So it's not in a hurry as it is for us. And, and it's important that you, you can take part to this. I will talk about three, I will show to you just three solar decathlon today. And uh, the first was 2011 because we applied for the, in 2000, at the end of 2010, we applied for 2012, for the 2012 edition. And that edition was, and we were ad admitted. And, uh, but in Italy, no one knew at that time 
what Solar de Caton was. And we were the first Italian university admitted in a Solar de Caton. So I decided to go to, to Solar de Caton 2011 just to see what it was and how I have to manage in uh, being the faculty advisor of the team to manage this competition because I didn't know anything about it. And uh, what was good, it, in 2011, I was committed by the Italian television to realize a TV show of 10 hours on the solar decathlons. So we have 10, uh, 20 houses, 20, 20 shows, each uh, half an hour per uh, each house houses um, representing the, this solar. And this helped me to understand very well what that involved and what that means. And so uh, I came back and we prepared our our, our answer for the Solar Decathlon 2012. And uh, in that way, I learned also uh, the difference between the American one and the European one. Because the two, the two competitions are very, very different. And uh, you can see that immediately from the rules. Richard talked about the American rules, and uh, as well, Edwin talked about the European ones. And there are a difference in points and in content. The contests are 100 points, five judged by juries and five judged by a monitorate. And uh, in Europe it's different because we have seven contests ju uh, judged by juries and just three monitorate. And it seems that it, this is less, uh, maybe let's say, um, objective, but the, the weight, the different weight that the contests have in the Solar Decathlon European can help to have to balance this difference. And uh, so the proposal we present to the Solar Decathlon 12, uh, you already see something from uh, the Edwin speech, is it was something uh, that is important, I think, for you as well. It was to come back to our tradition that is very similar in the two countries, I can say. Uh, and so to cope with uh, warm climates and no more with the, the, the cold one, and uh, with the hot climates, sorry, not the cold ones. And um, because also looking at the global warming, it's much more important to be able to deal in a passive way with the hot conditions instead of the cold ones that are very easy to be faced. And, the, the, and you know very well, much more than me, how it difficult it is to, to, to avoid the thermal wave of the hot condition, summer conditions uh, enter in your buildings. And uh, we started from the Sumerian hieroglyph and uh, the first, the upper one, I don't know if there is, this one is home, means homes, and this is, means patio home. And so we design our house, a patio house from Mediterranean tradition, uh, like the ancient, very ancient, 3,000 years ago, hieroglyph. And, um, and so the house was very introverted, very close from outside, and so close that we printed on this wall uh, that was in, in a textile, and we printed the, the images and the history of this design project just to, uh, I mean, let people doing something outside of the house because it's so very, very close. But inside we have a big patio that acts at, uh, acted as a buffer zone for the interior condi thermal conditions and uh, where we put a lot of vegetation and we put a, a particular vegetation, I want to say that because you have a sustainable vegetation contest and we, we selected a lot of um, plants that are able to detect the pollution. So they change their color or they change the shapes of, the, of their leaves uh, in, if there are too many pollutants in the air. So they are like a sensor, but a natural sensor of pollution. And a big roof of photovoltaic shadows, the south facade, permitting to have very big uh, glazed walls that is not belonging at our tradition, Mediterranean tradition, neither in yours tradition there is that, and, um, but having this big roof shadowing it and calculating it thanks to the possibility of simulation that we have today, it was possible to, to change the tradition and to have something that is uh, more in our uh, contemporary design style. And, um, and the idea was to have a uh, an interior also respecting our, our uh, 
style, uh, lifestyle, for example, to have a dining room where we sit down all properly all together having a meal, a separated kitchen that we can close, and then a separate bedroom, no open space that doesn't belong to our tradition. And um, this is the interior, and you can see that what is surprising, maybe you, is this big anchovies on the wall. This wall is long 12 meters, and, uh, for the, and the painting is high 2 meters, so it's a very big, enormous anchovies um, that helps during this competition to recall the sustainable fishing in the Mediterranean that is for small fishes, very fast reproducing, and very healthy for, for, uh, for people, not like the big ones. And, um, but not just for this, because with this painting we want to avoid an imp uh, a no proper uh, employee of this wall, because behind this there is an, in, uh, an inertial mass, we will talk about it later, and, uh, and to let uh, the mass working properly, we need to avoid to have cupboards, shelves, and library and what else uh, that could impede this transfer of heating. And, uh, but there is another, another feature that this fish did during the competition, it was to reduce the consume, that is always the emphasis that we put in these houses, uh, and this in particular was a passive house, and, uh, and this anchovy uh, that connects all the, all the spaces of the, of the house, uh, recall and collects all the natural lighting during the day and release it at night, permitting to don't switch on the light when you want to go through the house during the night. And um, so for you, maybe it could be interesting to know how we prepare the team for this competition. Because it was our first time, so it's the same for you. No? So sometimes you try to, to get together all the best because you say, I want to be really challenging. But pay attention because it's really the opposite that you need. You don't need the best, you need the best friends. So you need a teamwork, you don't need the most uh, technical and professional that you can find. And, uh, but to present ourselves in the, in the competition, and we said no one will know my university, that is Roma 3, and it's a very unknown university, and, uh, but maybe everyone in Europe for sure will know Sapienza University, 700 years of history, the oldest uh, university of the world, more or less, so, you know, and a very big, huge, the biggest of Europe, for sure, of maybe of the world, it's a very huge university. So I, take, I took a small team from them, very small, they just designed the furniture, so very nice, but in the proposal, I arrived with a very big name, and that helped us a lot, I think, to be selected. Edwin can say, <laughs> can say us why we have been selected, but, this, I think, uh, could help. And then we, we put a painter, and this is also is something that can help you in communication. And also, in, uh, when you are in a competition, you have to surprise someone and to give something new and to be recalled for someone as a souvenir. Ah, that, the house with the big fish, okay. It's, so we, we decided to involve a painter, and, he, and, and the students work with him to find the right message to give. With, with this painter. And, um, and then we, we, we involved as well, later, a good university in, uh, in simulating and modeling the passive and active behavior of the house, and this is a good technical uh, help. But uh, it's important also to involve other uh, uh, technicality, I can say, because of course we had engineering, architecture, and economics, and communication, but we decided to have your, our own uniform designed by a school of fashion design. And we organized a contest between the students of, uh, for them, and the best, and the winner of the contest realized the, um, the uniform that we, uh, we had the, in this competition, so for working time, and then for, for uh, the visiting, uh, uh, the visiting uh, weeks of the competition. But the, the most important things and, uh, that, that the competition permit to do in my position, and that could be very useful for all the professor and manager of the university, is to involve industry. When research can, can link with the industrials, it's so important because in that way, 
really the, the, the research makes a step forward towards the experiment. And experiment is the, really, uh, the real way to test a new idea. And it's for that this competition is really fitted for innovation. And I will tell you later this because uh, but uh, f this competition was pre pretty good. We were expecting, we were already happy to, to build our prototype. It was already enough because, you know, first time in this competition, but we were on the stage of the awards every time, as you can see, uh, third to first, second prizes in many contests. Uh, really, really good. And for a, a third place in the final ranking, that was really amazing for us and not expected at all. So a real, a very good souvenir about that. But believe me, to be there is already uh, to win the competition. To be there and to be able to, to build the, 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 the prototype in the, time, in the short time you have, that is around one, two weeks, so very short, depends of the, on the editions. So for that, third place, we say maybe it's a lucky occasion and we have to test if we are very good or not. And it's really good that we are really able to do something important. So I decided to apply again. It was very hard because we finished on, on October. We dismantled the, the first house, the Made in Italy house in, uh, in uh, October 5th. And October 7th, we remounted it in a, in a big uh, event in Italy. And two months later, we disassemble it and we remounted, remounted it in, a, in our campus. So, you know, a very, very hard job. And in the meantime, we had to prepare the new proposal for the new edition. So at the moment I was like, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. And in the end, we, we, we presented it and we were selected uh, with uh, 16 other countries, very challenging university. Again, the only Italian university present who who was involved in this edition and um, this edition was is in my in my opinion there is before 2014 and after 2014 not just because i was there but also because they uh, the organization here addressed very much on energy efficiency that is very important in my opinion but also in uh, energy efficiency uh, evolved evolved to, towards the smart city and towards the, to, uh, the way to solve the urban problem that affects our cities, metropolis, and of course towns and villages as well. But the big cities where the university were uh, working on, and um, I think that this, this, uh, this new contest on urban topics was uh, really important because, of course, to deal with just your own home is something, to deal with your own building is something else, and to, to deal with your building in a town, in a city, it's, it's another, another challenge, very important. And uh, these are the six, were the six contests ju judged by juries in, um, in Versailles. And so architectural, urban, engineering, energy efficiency, communication, and sustainability, as you know, because we, we talk about, they talk about before me about this. But then there is the seventh, that was innovation. Innovation is quite strange in this competition and in the previous one, in the European edition, is something judged by the previous juries. So the, the jury of architecture will say, how much innova innovation there is from the architecture point of view, and then the engineering one, the energy efficiency, communication, and so on. And so it's like a sum of different judgments. And, uh, but as I told you, when you put in the industry, academical research, and students together, you cannot have innovation. Innovation is for sure there, because innovation is to invent something that is useful for someone. And uh, so, Industry knows very well what is useful now, what the market is asking for. Research can, uh, can have the way to, to test and to, uh, to imagine the, the new things and the new address of the research where they are. But the, the students help that because they have, they, are, they have so few knowledge that can, they can help to have new ideas. So for that, innovation is a very important topic of of this competition because it's on the basis of the idea of solar decathlon. And then the three monitored, the three monitored contests were 
uh, like uh, like in other competition, energy balance between the, the the use of energies and the production, comfort conditions in all the different thermal, acoustic, uh, lighting, and um, quality of air, and uh, and so on, and then house functioning. Last but not least, because house functioning contains all that uh, is related to the the functioning of the house. It's the simulation of our, the real life in the house. And it could be, could seem that to make a laundry and to, to invite people for a dinner is not so important, but it's very important for, for, for a teamwork, for a team, uh, for, a, for a good mood of the competition. But it's very important also because I think that students in that competition, they learn how to become a professional of their own domain. So to design architecture, engineering, to communicate well if they are, and to simulate digitally what they are thinking, and then also to produce what they design. That is very important to know the passage between a design of a component and its, its, uh, its realization and to assemble all these components. So it's a step forward in, in the knowledge of their real future professional life. But this is not all, because they learn also, uh, uh, and they patent the innovation, of course, but they learn also how to run the future home. And this is, I think, is the most important things, because they, they learn as well how to clean a house. That's very useful. They learn how to cook a meal. They learn how to dress a table. Very, very important, because they know anything. But they know how to run the future home from the energy point of view switching on or off the HVAC and closing, closing curtains and so on. And so they are able to manage and to forecast the weather to know if the laundry could be balanced electrically and so on. And this is important because all this, all this, it's going alone, all this, um, all these things help people to help them to, to become the new citizen of tomorrow. I don't know if you know, how many, um, how many um, model homes have been designed in the world and then have been given to normal people. And this model home were, were the most uh, efficient, the best designed, the, the, they produce a lot of energy, but people inside weren't able to manage them. And at the end, they consume as a normal house. And this is a big problem because I think that um, it's important to prepare people to live in this kind of, of buildings. And Sara de Catron helps that. And if you imagine 1,000 of people each edition, now we are around more than 10,000 people involved and able to manage a, a different kind of, of housing. And that's a big, a, a big a, a small steps in a big in a big challenge that the world face in that in that moment. So as I told you, we participated to to, to Versailles edition, and I, I like very much to to highlight the four new. Uh, although Edwin told already that that the, the four new the four vision that this competition put on the stage, and uh, the first was density. So we need to densify our t our cities and not to consume new lands. And that was the first topic. So work on your town, work on your city, work on your metropolis, in the case if there was Mexico City, for example, and try to find solution on the problem that arises there. And of course, this call immediately with it, the mobility and the transport solutions for these cities. And so in this design, students should, uh, should link uh, also, the, the, this topic is a very huge and important topic and a, a very, very responsible of a lot of consumes of energy in, uh, in, uh, in our metropolis and here as well. And, and then the third was sobriety. Sobriety means don't put a lot of energy in your house. Try to don't consume it. That's a very great message. And please remember it here because some of the skyscrapers that are here are consuming more than a town in Europe. One. Okay, so I mean the, the, the real important topic is to be to to, to not to provide a lot of energy, but not to but 
to not consume it. And in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Madrid, we had a limit on 10 kilowatt powers um, per house of, of peak of energy. Here it was the half, five. So uh, it's a challenge to be, to be plus energy, to be energy positive, although you don't produce a lot. So you have to emphasize the passive behavior. And then last but not least again, the affordability of these prototypes, uh, of these the housing uh, solutions, uh, because of course the social issues is very important. And these houses have, have to belong to everyone and not just to rich people who can afford it. So in that situation, the team was much more concentrated on Roma Tre. Now our name was enough renewed thanks to the 2012 edition. And we involved just architecture, engineering, and economics, and 30 students, and 15 professors, and uh, many, many sponsors. Again, very important, as I told you. And uh, the idea was to work, as the competition asked us, on the town, uh, the city of provenience of the team. For us, was Rome. So we created a logo that was Rome with an H in the middle, so a home for Rome. The idea was to create a housing solution for our cities. A very nice, very beautiful, very wonderful city that have been celebrating the same period by uh, this uh, great new movie that was The Great Beauty. And who won the Oscar for the best foreign movie? Just in the meantime, we were in the competition. So fantastic, because for the communication proposal, it was perfect. You are bringing Rome in on the stage, and you have next the, the, the Oscar. Uh, sometimes there is lucky in the things, of course, and you have to point on that because that helps. Uh, but uh, the great beauty, uh, I'm not bringing that to, to recall the, the, the movie, but have a look at this because it's a very um, Roman contemporary lifestyle after the Dolce Vita that was the real important movie of the Rome lifestyle of the 60s. And, but because uh, this is the, the main actor of the movie, and uh, Tony Servillo, and on his back there is an aqueduct. This aqueduct is the Appio Claudio Aqueduct, a very ancient, a Roman aqueduct before the emperor, the empire of the Roman Empire, just in the Democratic Republic of Rome. So a very, very ancient one. And uh, few steps forward from there, this is the Appio Claudio, and this is, these are the same arch that you saw there, and this is let's say, a slum in the Roman cities. And this aqueduct uh, in, con, uh, connects another aqueduct in the same, in the same point, and, and they created the park of aqueduct in Rome. And this second aqueduct is uh, in the, from the Pope times aqueduct, so uh, more recent. And, um, and as you can see, there is this kind of situation that belongs to the, all the big metropolis of the world. So nothing new, but it's weird to see that compared with this great beauty. Now that's one, something that is strange usually because usually favela slums are in, a, in the boundaries that are very degraded and to have this beauty next to it, it's, it's, it's quite strange. And we map a lot of situations like this in Rome. And, uh, and for that we decided to work on that. And, uh, to, to map all the, all the illegal construction that there were, to demolish them, and to rebuild a new district with new housing, uh, five, four, four, five floors buildings of social housing, that means uh, low, uh, low, um, low cost housing, and uh, I mean for everyone more or less where to, we want to put, so we, 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 we give back the great beauty to, to the park of aqueduct, and we, we distributed the buildings in, in, a, in a district that is not very dense and not very well built in order to reconnect a bit uh, this urbanization and, and, and to have a free space around the aqueduct. And, um, of course, in the, in the idea of a smart city, we have not the time to enter in all the details, just I want to select some, but smart city means to have on your maybe smartphone all the, uh, all the apps that you can, 
to, to control your house and to enter in and to have your uh, bus and public transport uh, uh, card inside and what else. And so the idea was this and we work, uh, the students work on that and, and imagine a lot of district facilities to be put there to have a perfect district that could really make the change in this, in this part of, of the town. And we, the, uh, the, we, 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 we changed the situation of this area and we, we doubled the, new, the number of apartments, we doubled the number of dwellers and we occupy 80% less land. That's very important. So having the double of people, it's, there is a lot of land uh, back to the, to the environment. Uh, the project based its, its uh, strategy on, uh, let's call it less is more, a less is more philosophy. And uh, I will show you to use only some. A first one of them was less construction, more production. And the idea, the idea was, and is something that belongs very much to the solar decathlon, it's one of the assets, most important of the solar decathlon, is to prefabricate the prototypes. And um, so the idea was to design something and to have the right software to control the, proce the process of, 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 of the realization of the components. And um, of course, in our case, this was complicated by the anti-seismic uh, issues because then the prototype will be back in Italy and France wasn't involved with the seismic protection, but it was important for us to have uh, a prefabrication already organized also for um, to, to contrast the seismic actions. And, um, but the idea is it's really to have uh, a, a completely prefabricated building and this and to avoid the much you can um, job on the building site. So the building site should be very fast, very clean and very safe. So, of course, we cannot bring five floors in Versailles. So, and in, we had just 10 days to build it. So, with just one floor, it was enough. We decided to bring um, one of the apartments of the last floor, uh, so the attic of the house. And, um, of course, we, we, we decided for fabrication, then we will see why in wood. And, but we have, a, in this prefabrication, we have a constraint, a very big one, because we decided to, to bring all the house by, by railway. And the containers of, for, for the train are a bit smaller than the truck containers and the ship containers. So we should shape the components in, way, in a way that could be transported in a standard way in, in, uh, in the in the competition, in, to the competition uh, site. And as I told you, we, we had 10 days of assembly. So every phase, every movement, every track should arrive at the right moment with the right things in, uh, and everything had to be planned and organized. So the, the strategy we, we decided to, ha to, to have, and this could be helpful for you, it was the one, two, put in the establishment of prefabrication and the, the, all the uh, difficult things and to have just on the building side the simple things. So the first of this is this, this big things. This is bathroom, kitchen and all the technical room, electrical with inverters for photovoltaic and all the HVAC. And uh, this is in a center position for all the house and is the plug of everything. Uh, you can see here, all the HVAC, all the ventilation, mechanical ventilation, uh, radial panels, um, electricity are plugged from here, water, hot water and water in, in general, everything is there. And so when you arrived in the building sites in half an hour, you have your kitchen functioning, your HVAC functioning, and your bathroom functioning in half an hour, and that's very fast. But that's, it, it's also very safe for students, because remember that students are assembling that, and to postpone it that in the establishment helps you to have the technician involved there. And all the problems, all the tests uh, have been done there. So for a very uh, real building site, it's very important because you avoid all the expensive expenses for technical people on the building site as well. And then you have less difficult 
job to be done there. So uh, also it's m much more safe for the students. And these are some images of the prototype we, we had in, uh, in Versailles. This, this cat is the continuing the, of the building with the other uh, apartment. A second less, uh, less is more is less energy, more synergy. So the idea was not to give too much energy to the building, but to have a very s synergy in the behavior. And the, beha the, the ideal behavior of this kind of building is to have a passive behavior able to control the, the, to, to reach the comfort zone. So in summer when it's very, in winter when it's very cold or in summer when it's very hot, you can have a first step done by the behavior of the building. And then each back is just the small arrows here. So uh, the idea is to, to help this, uh, this behavior. But this is user, useful finally for someone here. So consider also that to below the temperature of one Celsius degree needs three times the energy to high the temperature of the same degree. So that means that to put air conditioning in a building is three times much more consuming energy than to heating it. So for that, to, to be able to have a passive behavior in hot condition is much more important than in the cold one. And for our Mediterranean tradition, the answer to be passive is this kind of building. This is Dolce Gabbana Villa in Stromboli. Behind you can see a volcano, still active. And this is really the way in which we, we built in the past. And this is a real perfect image of the Mediterranean as this is the same strategy of big inertia uh, in your tradition. But to do that in, uh, in the way, in a, in a prefabricated competition, where you have to dismount, to disassemble your prototype, it's very hard, and belongs just to prefabricated uh, concrete. That is not a very good technology, uh, because it's very difficult to have tightness of the building when um, when you built it and when you test it in the competition, but as well, uh, it's very difficult to disassemble it. And also the footprint of the concrete is very high comparing with other materials, because concrete is a very, uh, the LCA of concrete is not very good. It's not the best material. So we decided to move to wood, timber, prefabrication. It's the perfect, timber is the perfect material for prefabrication and the footprint is very low. There is very an envir environmental, a very good environmental material. And so we decide to go with the classical, very insulated layer, typical of the wooden construction. And uh, this, I moved this from here anyway, yeah. And, um, but this, um, this, um, this technology is not, uh, the right one for the cold climate because it, it's in Italy, for example, the, the, the big industry of, wool, of timber construction is in the north, on the Alps, so in a very cold climate. And for that, and also, we, are, we have the habit also here to have a radiating panels because the, the big mansory help us to have, for the comfort, not, not only um, a, a, um, heating by air, but also by the inertia of the walls that can give back with radiation uh, a, a good feeling. So to have this, we decided to, to add a layer in the typical section. And we add this kind of layer that you see in red. And this is just free sand that you have so much here. So could be a good idea for you as well. And the, the layer in the, uh, inner, uh, in the inner part of this section is fill it by sand. For the competition purpose, uh, we put this in tubes, in aluminum tubes, just because we need to move them at the end uh, during the disassembling uh, phase. But in, in our idea is a, a continuous layer fulfilled by sand, able to, to cope 
the, the thermal wave. In the winter behavior, that is not very important here, uh, this inertia is keeping all the, all the heating. For example, you can switch on, when you have the solar power, we switch on the radiation panels, you charge very well the mass of the wall, and then at night, it, the, this heating will be released in, at the interior. And, but in the middle season and in summer, you can do the same, keeping all the heating that you can have in, inside due to, furniture, due to people, due to um, appliances that are working and then producing heat. Uh, of course, not due from the sun rays because you have, you have your, your house well shadows and well closed from the, from the radiation during the day. And, but you, you charge this inertia with this heating. And then at night, you open the window when there is a change of this thermal wave and when you have fresh air that could enter and you can refresh your mass, you can wash it eat, and you can pull out all the heating that she start to, to it start to release. Let's consider that this could be very useful for your winter condition, not of course for the summer ones because in the night maybe it's too hot to do that. And most of the teams in solar decathlon employ PCM, phase change materials. And many times we have been asked why you don't use this instead of sand. For two reasons, maybe three. One, sand is much more um, affordable than PCM. Second, PCM, the PCM footprint is not very good because it comes from oil as well, so it's not natural, and we point to a natural building. And third, PCM is very fireable. So in a building that is in wood with uh, fiber wood as insulating panel, to put something fireable, it's not very, a very good idea. So we avoid this. Uh, but with the sand that mm, transform a very light building in a heavy one, this helps also for the acoustic behavior. That is a challenge for you here in this competition, new one. So uh, this helps to have more comfort inside for the inside uh, vibration of the sound, but also from the outside, helps the, the envelope to, to cope, uh, to cope the, the acoustic problems. And uh, for that, we, we certified our house for the, for, the natural behavior, for the natural provenience of the materials with a special certification for natural housing. That's, that was one of the aim of this project. Uh, the other aim was the HVAC integration, so to have everything uh, well interconnected and to use them at when it was really necessary. But this is the most interesting, technically speaking, uh, facade of the building. This is the south one. And as you can see, there is a photovoltaic there and there is a black balustrade in the loggia. And uh, so the photovoltaic is a flexible photovoltaic, but it's not an amorph. This is a silicon one, but it's a monocrystalline, but it's flexible. That's very important. This is very light, very light, very able, very easy to be, to be put on and to be moved on the building. So the idea was, imagine the big housing building, to have each dweller with its own uh, photovoltaic screen and uh, able to shade the loggia, the south loggia, that is a buffer zone for the interior, and to shade it during summer day, summer day, but in winter time or in night time, you can open it. And this, this uh, as you can see in the prototype, uh, this curtain can also be tilted in order to let, to, to, to permit ventilation and to let people see outside. And this is a very step forward in the, in the, in the research of photovoltaic because remember that photovoltaic, if you have your own field, you are responsible on it. If you have just your roof, you can, you can manage, uh, you, can, you, can, you can use it improperly because of course you are not interesting. Okay, we have photovoltaic in this building, so no problem, I can, I can have light on all the time. No, when it's your own, you have your own amount of energy and then you start to pay for. So it's very important for the, for the awareness of the, of the inhabitants. And uh, the, the balustrade is a thermodynamic one. That means that there is a gas inside it, and it can provide in any situation, cold, hot, sun, not sun, night, day, 
rain, not rain, what else, can provide hot water. In few times with a very high efficiency and um, when, uh, and when it, it, it runs, this panel became cold. And that's very useful because in the loggia, during hot hours, you can have this panel working and preparing your tank of hot water, but in the meantime, you can have a radiation, a fresh radiation in your loggia, so you can stay there, although it's very hot around you. It's like an air conditioned for free, because it's provided like uh, um, a, back, a, a back effect. And um, you, ca you can see there the hand is touching and there is moisture because the panel is cold and so it's, it's uh, the humidity, it's um, moisturing on the panel. That's helping in a humid situation like Rome is and like Dubai is. And, uh, but the two, the two devices, the photovoltaic and the, and the balustrade, are perfectly integrated in this building and perfectly integrated in a symbiotic behavior between them. And this, I think, is what we have to do with integration. So when, when the photovoltaic, you know it very well, when it's too hot, photovoltaic doesn't work very efficiently. And that's a problem for all the South countries because, of course, we have a lot of sun, but we cannot employ it like Germany people. With they have fresh air around the photovoltaics. But if we switch on this panel, this panel refresh the air around the photovoltaics so the efficiency of it can be raised. So I think that this two, this two, this symbiosis could be good. Also, the photovoltaic can give, can give a lot of heart to the to the panel and the panel can be more efficient for that. So this uh, is a way that I suggest for integration. Um, less waste, more resources, in order less is more, but let's go directly. This is, was the idea that every waste can become a resource in our, in our design. And that was really, for, for example, for the furniture that were recuperated in the rubbish and just um, renewed by the students in a, in a laboratory. But for, for you, it could be use, useful this research we did because uh, this is for, for the water cycle. Of course, the building collects water when it rains, and, but in our standard rules, the, the rainwater could be used just for washing cars, uh, uh, rosing uh, plants, and uh, uh, the flash of water. So, um, of VC, that, that's the only purpose we can have for this. We can wash streets with that. So it's not very intelligent, but it's like this. But um, we found, we worked with, as a sponsor with a company who is uh, engaged in the big uh, special research and military one. And they, you know very well that in the shuttles, in the space, all the cycles are closed. There are no waste from there. So that means that what they eat and what they drink is, today is what they eat and they, they, they will drink tomorrow because there's no waste. So everything is recycled. And people is very well when they come back. It's not that they're, what there is there. There is a very uh, depurator, very, very performant, who is able to keep a closed cycle of water. Mm, it's clear, your PP is what you drink tomorrow, but it's clean, okay? And what else? Hopefully, I, I cannot say this in English because I'm not able, otherwise in Italian I will tell you. And uh, so you say people, people from, from this pasture are not, are not sick when they come back. So the idea could be why the building cannot have a big depurating like this and have a closed water cycle, each one. And this could, could be very helpful in this situation, for example. So we try to put this in our design. Of course, now it's very expensive still now, but you know, the research is going on. So to have a bigger one could be, could be, could be possible in a few years, I'm sure. Less things that could be useful for, for you is less automation, more information. There is a lot of research on, let's call it domotics, or um, building automation. I'm against that for sure, because 
uh, in my university, I have building automation. And it's my room that decides when I want light and decide how much, te which temperature do I want, how much lighting she, so, so the, the building is closed, open, lighted or not, from a, a, a data sheet that have been decided from someone else. I don't like that. So I think that imagine in a, in a house, just in a bureau, but in a house. So I'm really against building automation, I think, that, but it's important to monitor what it happens. So we decide to, to stall from automotive the, the computer that everyone has in its own car. We know very well when our car say us there is no more fuel or it, you have just, just 10 kilometers of possibility to go. The, the car doesn't block in itself in that moment. You can continue, you can go faster and finish it in five kilometers. You can go slower and finish it in 20 kilometers. You can stop immediately and run away or you can go to a petrol station and refill it. But it's your own choice and that's the difference. So we want to do that in our houses. And so we design a dashboard like the, the dashboard of the uh, car and we call it dual, dual and dual living. And uh, you have a sensor for everything and you can monitor how much you are producing, how much you are consuming, and you can balance it immediately. And you can, of course, change your things, but you can go forward and you have a digital mirror and you can see in the house in 3D, online, from outside also, which kind of appliances are working on and which one are off at the moment and how much they are consuming and you can interview in, in uh, decide what to do after that and then there is and then in, in this digital media you can have also a visualization of the quality of the air so you know that you need to change the air or you know to that you have to lower the humidity inside because you have a, a visible way you now all this small points, I don't know if you can see them in the slide. And then thanks to this, you can manage your house. And then you have the third level, that is this, the discovery one. And in that, you have a timeline, and you can go in the past and in the future on this timeline, so you can see what you did today, what you are doing today, what you did in the past, and why, for example, the bill of electricity is so high, because what, what's, are, what's it's, it was uh, right or what it wasn't, and so you can, you can go back looking at this, and you can go forward and in the future seeing that you have a maintenance, like in the car, maintenance, uh, you, you have to maintain something in your appliances or HVAC and so on. I finished. I finished. Driving less, sharing more, of course, is important to have a, a car plugged to your building and the positive energy is for the cars and not for, for, uh, not for private cars, but for sharing cars. And what's happened? We won, as everyone told you already, and uh, what do you do, what is possible to be done with a victory? Very few things. Of course, all the world newspapers will talk about you, and that's very uh, exciting at the moment, but then newspapers are useful to wash the glass is facade, so it's not very important. So in my opinion, was the real idea was to have an Italian solar decathlon in Rome. And I don't know if you know Circo Massimo, that is an ancient part of the town where there are many events. And my idea was to have a solar decathlon there that is the same size of National Mall, so to have this big event there. But of course, there's some dreams for the moment. Let's see, my government, if it's as smart as yours. But, and for the moment, the only thing my government did is to fund the research for transferring this knowledge to other countries. And one of these countries is um, Argentina, where there are a lot of slums, a lot of horrible living conditions. And so now it's, on, it's, it's quite probably that in that year and in the next one, we will have the possibility to build two prototypes and to test them in the mild condition of Buenos Aires that are similar to Rome and in very extreme climate of Patagonia, so very, very cold one, and to test these two prototypes 
the same way of solar decathlon there, hoping that maybe they will apply for a solar decathlon next. And, uh, and then the new, the big new is that Rome is back in, in, uh, in, uh, in Rome University as an office, and so that could be helpful for the students that didn't, uh, took, didn't take part to this competition. So thank you so much. Shukran. <laughs>